Yes, people, welcome back. Welcome back to my channel, Albert JTV. To my subscribers, again, your loyalty has no bounds. Anybody recently new that subscribed to the channel, thank you very much for your support. It is much appreciated. Um, smash that notification button so you know when my content's coming out. Subscribe to the channel and hit that like button as well. And you can get me on all forms of social media, on my Twitter and Instagram. Link is in the description. Um, so yeah, I'll do something different on my channels actually. Um, I did say when I first started this YouTube journey that it's not just going to be Arsenal related, it's going to be football related in general. And first time I'll be talk talking about the England national team. Um, going off the back of tonight's game, but it's also something I wanted to talk about for quite a while. Um, so yeah, a dreary 0-0 um, nil, nil draw, Denmark 0, England 0. Um, now, I've seen on social media for quite a while, to be honest, not just so much about tonight's game, um, more so in regards to Gareth Southgate. Um, so, what my opinions on Gareth Southgate is I actually like South, Gareth Southgate. I think he comes across quite quite articulate, well-spoken. Um, you know, he made no secret when the job became available when Sam Allardyce got sacked. Um he, he, he didn't put his name into the ring for, for the job. I mean, you know, well, effectively, he didn't really want it. Um, but he, he got it, you know, two years on, two years on now. Um, going shortly back to the World Cup before I come on to tonight's game, or yesterday's game, whenever I shoot this video, um, or when I put it out, shall I say. You know, people questioned England in terms of the teams they played in order to get to that semi-final of the World Cup. Um, yes, Panama, Sweden, no mugs, but, you know, very efficient team, but no no world beaters. Um, if you play, played Tunisia, got a tough victory. Colombia was, <laughs> that was an interesting last 16 game, man. I think Colombia tried every trick in the book. Um, to get the win, but it didn't. And um, obviously England came up short against Belgium twice. Um, and I remember listening to BBC Five Live, actually. Um, I think it was the day after the World Cup semi-final defeat, or it might have been a week after, I can't remember the time frame. But even then, there was a lot of England fans ringing in who still weren't particularly very complimentary of Gareth Southgate, I must say. And that was just after England got to semi-final. Um, which I still think to this day was a missed opportunity for England, to be honest. Um, they played that semi-final against Croatia and they sort of reverted back to the England team I've seen in the last 15, 20 years. Um, men behind the ball, long balls missing out, just the midfield trying to get the balls to strikers um, ASAP. And it just, yeah, missed opportunity two years ago, I thought, for England, personally speaking. But yeah, sort of fast forward into the game against Denmark. Um, yeah, with Southgate, I, I sort of... And even the little bit of the game against Iceland the other day, um, his team selections do sort of baffle me. Um, you know, and from a from a biased point of view in terms of Bukayo Saka, for example, not being included in the squad, um, the squad that was picked for the two Nations League games, no left backs. Uh, yeah, and I sort of want to touch on I'll touch on the game first, actually, before I talk about Southgate. Um, yeah, I think England slightly had the more possession, but Denmark looked more threatening, to be honest with you. Um, and even England could have snatched at the end with Harry Kane. But yeah, the, when I saw the team, um, actually, first, I must say I was buzzing for Conor Cody. I think it's been well overdue for him to get an England call up. Um, yes, people say he plays better in a three. They're not sure he could play in a two. But you know what? I thought he was excellent um, yesterday, to be honest, um, and deserved his England call-up. Dyer in the back three, along with Joe Gomez. Um, the, 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 the Eric Dyer thing, I, cu I couldn't understand. Um, irrespective of Gareth Southgate's loyalty towards Eric Dyer, you've got a left-sided centre-half there who can play in the three, Tyron Mings. Unless he's injured or something we don't know about, he should have started to add balance to the back three. Um, you're playing Kieran Trippier at left wing back. Um, and then obviously Trent came in at right wing back. And you could even see it during the first half, you know, Eric Dyer's not comfortable there. Um, Ming should have started. Even 
shout out to Calvin Phillips um, getting his debut for England, Leeds United. Very, very good player. Um, one to watch out for in the Premier League, actually, this season, I think. But even he, <laughs> first England cap, um, proudest day of his probably his life. But does he play in a position that he plays for Leeds? No, the Yorkshire Pirlo, um, Calvin Phillips. But it's that classic thing again with England, isn't it? Over quite a few different managers over the years, shoehorning players into positions that they don't play for their club. Um, yes, I understand you've got to play systems to accommodate players, but and I do take into consideration that you know the players have come back after quite a short break, injuries, uh, people pulling out the squad. Um, and yeah, so you wasn't going to get tip, you know players in tip top form. I, I, I get, I understand that, but that midfield was just no balance with playing Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips in there. Um, and I don't know what Jack Grealish has got to do to get a start for England. I mean, he only made the squad because Rashford and Harry Winks pulled out. Um, but yeah, like the game, yeah, dreary nil nil. Um, England, like I said, could have snatched it in the end, like I mentioned before. But yeah, it just, um, you know, it sounds pretty simple, but I'd like to see when I watch a team play, not even England, Arsenal, wherever, how quickly a team gets the ball forward. Um, I'm not talking about flashy passes or silky touches. I'm talking about transitioning from A to B as quick as possible. Um, and England don't do that enough. Um, but again, that comes down to creativity to create creativity issue. And even if I go back to James Madison, you know, I know he's injured at the moment, but even when people are talking about Madison being in the England squad and being in the England team, Southgate seemed pretty re reticent to actually even play him. Um, and again, even Jack Grealish with him getting England call up and him actually getting the call up and him actually getting minutes to play on the pitch. Um, he did try when he came on and Grealish with his little cameo stint. Um, happy to see big shout out to Maitland Niles, you know, Arsenal connection getting his England debut there. Um, did okay when he came on, actually, I thought. Um, but yeah, when Grealish came on, he tried. He's a bit, he's a bit more progressive, man. Um, but yeah, that leads me on to Gareth Southgate. I mean, it does concern me because I look at, I mean, I'm old enough to remember some of the players that played for England in the 1990 World Cup. Um, a great squad of players with Euro 96, um, a wasted group of players from probably 2006 to 2010. Um, no, I'd even go further than that from 2002 probably to 2010 under Ericsson and Capello. Um, my own personal opinion was I thought the biggest waste of a manager for England was um, Sven Goran Ericsson. Um, you got for the group of players he had for England, they should have done a lot better. Um, but yeah, I think with Southgate, I just it, it concerns me. I the last, I, you know, like I said, I take into consideration the. Am I talking nine minutes now? Um, wrap up soon. Yeah, the, I take into consideration the players that were available and you know players being rusty. But it just concerns me in terms of personnel because when Gabriel Clark interviewed him after the game, he talked about you know about the left-hand side, the left-sided part of the England team and their people not being available, essentially. But, you know, then my thing is pick a left-back or pick a left-sided player that can play as a wing-back or a left-back knowing that you're going to play that system, i.e. Bukayo Saka. Would have been ideal to play left wing-back rather than playing, no disrespect to Kieran Triprio, um, playing him out of position completely. Um, so yeah, it does concern me as someone with England, with the crop of youngsters they've got coming through and they've got now, merge with a little bit of experience. Some of the best group of England players I've seen for a very, very long time. But, you know, Southgate, yes, has created the culture that the players feel comfortable and he's giving players a chance, which I don't think would have happened under previous England manager, if, if I'm being brutally honest. But... It does concern me with the personnel picks he plays, um, considering we know that creativity is an issue with England, but you have creative players there that can play the role. But again, it's systems and the way the manager incorporates that. So yeah, I, I, I can see why some people, when I will go on Twitter and Instagram, that they're sort of firing shots at Southgate. And, and I get it. I get it. I, even I watched that game tonight against um, Denmark and even some of the players that played against Iceland. Um, yeah, that that'd be a concern for me as, as as an England fan watching that. But yeah, guys, 
drop your comments down below. Tell me your thoughts if you agree, disagree with me. Get the in, get get the dialogue going. Um, what did you make of the shape of the team, the system, the formation, the personnel? Um, again, another creativity issue. I feel like I'm doing deja vu because I'm talking about Arsenal when it comes to creativity. But it's the same with England as well. But they've got players at disposal at their disposal. Sorry, but it'd be interesting to see how they get on against um, Belgium in in October. That's going to be a stern test because they're ranked number one for a reason. Saw their game tonight, they won 5 1, outstanding. And they've got younger players coming through as well. Um, so, guys, yeah, drop your comments down below. You know the drill by now. Click, like, share, and subscribe. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification button for when my content comes out. So, for that's me, that's for me now, Albert, G, Albert JTV, sorry, over and out. Hashtag England, hashtag Gareth Southgate.